Hello, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking all about histamine intolerance and how you can actually heal from this. So this may be a bit of a, a shock to you, but this is not a problem that you have to have for the rest of your life. This is a totally healable, solvable problem. I've done it, I've seen plenty of other people do it. You can do it as well. And we're going, I'm going to tell you how, how to do it. So we're going to cover that in today's video. So you're going to have all of the information that you need by the end of this video to heal your histamine intolerance. And I really do mean that this is a, a healable thing. You can get to a point where you can eat any of the foods that you like, even if they have higher levels of histamine, you're not going to have to be dependent on supplementation for the rest of your life. This can take some time. You know, this is a, a process but you really can get to a point where you're completely, totally healed. Am I completely, totally healed just yet? I'm dependent on one supplement, but that's for a different reason. This is more of an MCAS thing, and I'm gonna talk about that in some detail. After we've gone over all of this, we're gonna, I'm gonna give you some notes on MCAS, mast cell activation syndrome, because this is kind of tied into this, because it, it's about histamine as well. So today we're talking about specifically histamine intolerance, so we're not gonna to touch so much on the MCAS. I'm gonna. I'm going to give you a little note towards the end, but we're going to talk about this component of this kind of problem and how you can actually solve it. So to give you some, some background so you understand where I've come from with this personally, I was on a restricted diet of five or six foods for about five years. These, I was extremely sensitive to histamine. If I had even the smallest bit of, of histamine containing food or probiotic or, or anything, if I pushed my, I'm sure you'll, you'll, you've heard the phrase, histamine bucket. If I push myself past my, my level of tolerance, I would have horrible insomnia, anxiety, panic attacks, like suicidal, like I have to kill myself right now, depression. It was awful, it was horrible. I'd get pain all through my body, I would get tired, my eyes would leak and cry, and I, they would be itchy all, all, all over my face and my nose, and it was absolutely horrible. And I was on a really super restricted diet from many food sensitivities, histamine being one of them. And now I'm at a point where I can eat anything and everything. I can eat high histamine foods, I can eat cheese, I can eat all of the fermented foods that I like, and I don't have any problems with those foods at all. No reactions whatsoever. And this is something that is totally achievable for you as well. I'm gonna show you how I did it and how I help others do it and how I'm gonna help you do it as well. So, healing histamine intolerance with probiotics. So we're gonna break this down into two primary problems. And the solution, as you can see, the solution is probiotics in both cases. But we're gonna, I'm gonna walk you through this so you understand the intricacies, the details, and, and how we're actually gonna go about this. So the first problem that we have is we have low DAO. So DAO is an acronym for the word, for the, for the what would you call it? For the term, diamine oxidase. So this is the name of an enzyme that's function that's important to cover today is to break the histamine molecule down. So this is how your body processes the majority of the histamine that it's exposed to, both from the food that you eat and any histamine that's produced in your gut. So this accounts for about 80% of the degradation of histamine in your body, which is, which is massive. So if you work on this one alone, you can get 80% symptom improvement, which is, which is pretty cool. I, I'd imagine if you had a, an 80% bigger histamine bucket and you had 80% more tolerance to foods, that would sound pretty good. So if we can work on this element of the, the problem, if we can start to restore DAO production in the gut, you're gonna find that you feel a lot better, the tolerance to many foods comes back, and this is an intrinsic part of solving this problem. So we have to look, we have to dig into this problem a little bit more. So you have low DAO, DAO being a, a brush border enzyme here, we've got BB enzyme. This means a brush border enzyme. So this helps us understand a little bit more about what's going on when we understand that this is where it's produced. So inside your gut, you've got these little, you've probably seen like an Activia or a Yakult advert on the TV before, right? So you've got like the, the gut, you've got this like big hollow tube and on the outside of it, you've got all these little like wiggly, wriggly finger type things. These are called microvilli. So these are a part of your digestive system and along the edge of every single microvilli, you have brush border enzymes being produced all the time. So these are enzymes that are supposed to help you break down, digest, and absorb your food. So this includes more, this includes a lot of different enzymes. So this includes things like sucrase, this includes, this includes a lot of different things. But today we're focused just on the DAO component because that's what's the most important here. The other, the other, the other enzymes do play a part and they and they're gonna affect your digestive health, but we, I'm trying to stay laser focused on this, on this specific problem today. So this is a brush border enzyme. 
So if you're low in DAO, this is an indicator that your brush border must be damaged because this is where it's produced. So we have to ask the question, okay, what is damaging the, the brush border? What is, so the brush border is like the factory that produces the DAO for you. So if you have low DAO, the, the next question you ask, the conclusion you come to is, okay, why is the factory that produces DAO not producing enough DAO? And the answer here is it's damaged. So the gut lining is damaged. And when it's damaged, it reduces its surface area. So imagine how much surface area you have, like all here. So look at how much, look at how much distance my finger gets to travel just by moving along these. And this is going all the way through your gut. When your gut's damaged, instead of them being like this, they look like this. They're really damaged and small. So you only have a tiny amount of surface area, like half or less, which means you're gonna be producing half or less of the amount of DAO, which means you're gonna to lose tolerance. So we need to ask the question, why is the gut damaged and how do we fix it? And one of the most important parts of healing the gut lining is making sure that we have the right microflora. So you can think of your, your beneficial bacteria, the, the microbes that inhabit your gut as like the builders and the caretakers of your digestive system. The process where your gut goes from this to this is it happens, it's orchestrated, it's controlled, it's, it's done, it's made to happen by the probiotics that are inside your gut. So if you don't have the right builders, if you don't have the right organisms, the right bacteria to help your body do this job, it's not gonna be able to heal the gut lining, which means you're not gonna be able to produce enough DAO, which means you're gonna be stuck in a DAO deficiency, which means you're gonna have a smaller histamine bucket. So if we work on healing the gut, we increase the size of the microvilli and we improve the health as well. We wanna increase the health of the microvilli. They're gonna be able to produce an appropriate amount of DAO, which means your bucket grows, you have more tolerance to different types of foods and you're gonna, you're gonna have less, less symptoms. This is, this is the first problem that we have to look at here. So that's understanding one component of this. The next problem that we have here, so as you can see, solution, heal the gut lining. How do we do that? We use probiotics. So we're gonna come down to probiotics towards the end. We're gonna talk more about the details. So problem two we've got here is we have too much histamine that is being produced in the gut. So there's, there's histamine that's being produced inside the gut. You know this is you, say for example, you eat foods that are low in histamine. So this could be things like rice. This is really common with starches. So this would be like rice, bread, pasta, starches. This can be anything as well. This can be fibers, this can be other types of vegetables. But this is especially vegetables that, and, and foods that are actually very low in histamine. But they trigger a histamine response anyway. And that makes you ask the question like, what is going on here? How can I eat a low histamine food and then have a histamine reaction? What's happening is here. Is, is, we're gonna talk about this here. So you've got organisms that are present inside your gut that are breaking the food down that you're eating and they're producing histamine as a byproduct. So you can think of these organisms as sort of like little histamine factories inside your digestive system. So when you're eating food, especially food that you've lost the ability to digest, so it kind of ties in nicely with this first point. As we said, if your brush borders are small, you lose all the enzymes on the surface. So you're losing the DAO, which is really important for this, for this part but you also lose all of the other enzymes that help you digest your food. And if you don't digest it, your gut bacteria are gonna eat it instead. And this is especially true of starches. And this is why many people react to starches with a histamine reaction, because they've lost the ability to digest the starch because the brush border's damaged, and they have an overgrowth or a, a, an increased presence of organisms that produce histamine inside the digestive system. So now, you've got an imbalance in the flora. You can see I've got a, a very crude drawing of some scales down here. We've got an increased amount of organisms that produce histamine and damage the gut lining and a reduced amount of, pro of organisms in the gut that break histamine down and heal the gut lining. And when this comes out of balance, you develop histamine intolerance. So, in flora, flora imbalance, what is the solution? It's probiotics, again. So, I'm not a fan of killing protocols. If you have too many or you have more histamine producing organisms in your gut, I wouldn't even try to kill them because it's not really the problem. The problem isn't that this side of the scale is too heavy. It's that this side isn't heavy enough. And you'll find that as you start to replenish the microflora, as you add the probiotics back in that you're missing, these histamine degrading strains, they're gonna balance themselves out and the scales that are like this are gonna come back to normal. Not because we try to make this side less heavy by killing the organisms, but because we make this side heavier 
by restoring the organisms that are missing. And this also has a, a double benefit because when you're doing this, these probiotic organisms that you're adding, they are, they are antimicrobial, they're antibacterial, they're antifungal. They actually kill these dysbiotic organisms, but in a gentler, softer way. And instead of just nuking your whole gut, and this, I, I see this over and over again, you just feel worse for it. Not a fan of it, don't like killing protocols, not suggesting it at all. If instead we focus on restoring the balance by bringing back the organisms that are missing and, and increasing the amount of histamine degrading enzymes, this balance is restored. And then we don't even have to do anything over here. We don't have to kill the pathogens because we've brought the balance back naturally by restoring the good. And again, so how do we do that? We do that with probiotics. So now we need to go into a little bit more detail about what kind of probiotics are gonna be good for this and some words of warning and some, some points of interest that are worth, worth mentioning. So when I'm saying probiotics here, I'm talking about a strain, specifically in this situation, in the context of histamine intolerance, I'm talking about a blend of strains that are histamine neutral or and or histamine degrading. So there's a, you've got a couple of options here. I think you've got the, the best option as far as, as far as I'm concerned is the D-lactate free formula by Custom Probiotics. They are the best probiotics. They are, they are a bit of an upfront investment. They are quite costly to purchase, but you're going to get an extremely high uh, value for money. So they do cost a lot up front, but the amount of CFUs that you get for what you pay for is the best out of all of the supplements that I'm going to talk about. You're going to want to start slow. And we're going to talk about some, some reactions in a minute, but I want to give you some other options. So you've got this D-lactate-free formula from Custom Probiotics is a good place to start. Some other options would be Smidge. Smidge is also a great option. I think that they do have a histamine-free variety or they are histamine-free by default. Do some research on that. And also, I think it's called Histamine X by Probiotica or Probiota, something like that. They are, they're quite good, they're quite safe. You just wanna make sure that the, the strains that are in it are histamine neutral or, or degrading. Histamine degrading organisms are gonna be better because they're gonna to help to start breaking down some of the histamine that you're being exposed to that's actually being produced in the gut. So they're not just gonna, they're not just going to not hurt you, they're actually going to help you as well. So my suggestion there is the D-lactate free by custom probiotics, especially if you have D-lactate issues as well. So if you have chronic fatigue syndrome or fibromyalgia or some, some more advanced health complications, the D-lactate free formula is definitely your safest option. So even when we're taking these kinds of probiotics, it's possible to have reactions and to have histamine reactions. And then you may, you may try these probiotics and have a histamine reaction and think, damn, they have histamine in, this is a problem, I can't take them. This is not what's happening. This is just an indicator that they're actually really good for you and they're going to help you heal this problem, you just push a little bit too fast. So what happens in this case is, so we've got this little scale over here. As you try to increase the, the good organisms, the histamine degrading organisms, the, the organisms that are already present in your gut, they don't really wanna go anywhere. They don't want to, they don't wanna move out. They wanna stay where they are because your gut is the most fertile, it's like the best real estate on the planet. You know, the human digestive system, you've got access to food all of the time. You've got access to moisture and heat. Like it's the best place for bacteria to live basically on earth. So they don't want to move out. And when you try to start putting new tenants in there, when you're trying to start adding new probiotic species into your digestive system, these ones that are already there, they're going to start to protest. They're going to start to get quite irritated and they're going to produce compounds that are going to make you feel bad. And one of these is going to be histamine. So this is gonna be these organisms producing compounds that are making you feel bad. And this is, they're doing this so that you stop doing the thing that's making them upset, which is you moving them out. So what we need to understand when this is happening is this is actually a really good thing. This is not a bad thing at all. It just means you have to go really slowly. So when you're taking a probiotic, even if it's histamine neutral degrading, it's still going to put extra load on your histamine bucket because the organisms that are already present in your gut that are giving you histamine intolerance are fighting the organisms that you're taking in the probiotic. And this, this combat, this warfare that happens between them produces excess histamine in the process. So this is one of those things that you have to really play with your level of tolerance. And what we're looking for is to go as fast as you can so that you're moving towards health as quickly as possible, but not at the cost of making yourself feel awful. So it's about finding that balance. I call this the Goldilocks zone. This, I have another video about this on my YouTube channel if you wanna check it out, the Goldilocks zone. It's the sweet spot right in the middle. You've probably heard the, 
Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You don't want it to be too hot, so you don't want to go too fast. You don't want it to be too cold, so you don't want to be going too slow. You want to be going just right. And just right is where you're doing the maximum amount you can, so the highest dose of the probiotics that you can tolerate, but without giving yourself symptoms. So you should not be experiencing histamine intolerance type symptoms when you're taking them. You want to keep your, tolerance, your level just, just, just below. And we're talking about histamine intolerance here specifically, but this is also true of many other symptoms. So if, you're, if you have, say, autoimmune joint problems, derived from a gut flora imbalance. When you take a probiotic, it's gonna irritate these organisms that are present in the imbalance, and it's going to make them release more of the compounds that trigger your autoimmunity. So this is something that you just have to watch out for and understand that it doesn't mean that the probiotic is bad, it doesn't mean that it isn't helping, it doesn't mean it isn't working. It means you just have to slow down and you only have a very small level of tolerance. You only have a, a very small window that you're able to work in. And this is something that can take some time. So in my case, I was severely, severely ill when I started doing this. And I took the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest little sprinkling of a probiotic, and even that would give me a reaction. And it took me three years to build up to a therapeutic strength dose of about 200 billion in a day. So this is something that you have to play by ear. You have to learn how to measure your own Goldilocks zone and figure out what is the fastest that you can go without making yourself feel awful. So reactions are not a bad thing. Reactions don't mean that it's not working. In fact, quite the opposite. It just means you have to be patient, go slow, and go at your own pace. So that covers this for, for HIT, but I would just want to give you a, little, a, little, a few little bonus points if you're dealing with HIT combined with MCAS, because I've got a few little tips for you here. So sometimes when you're eating a food, if it isn't being broken down, digested, and absorbed properly, it will leak in through the gut. I've got another video that you might find really interesting that talks about this in detail called the Leaky Gut Masterclass. Just type my name, William Dickinson, Leaky Gut Masterclass on YouTube. It'll, it'll show up. It's really good. It talks about the root cause of like autoimmunity and all of the different health problems that are connected to leaky gut or gastrointestinal hyperpermeability. Check that out. It's like the foundation of understanding the digestive system and chronic illness that's connected to it. So if this is occurring, when these molecules leak through, they're gonna trigger the immune system. The mast cells are gonna activate and in the process they're gonna release histamine. Your body is, you, you might be able to mitigate some of this, first of all by making sure you digest your food properly. So a digestive enzyme can be really helpful there. But on top of that, one of the digestive enzymes, amylase, is act, it actually acts inside your body as a mast cell stabilizer. So you may find that combining um, a, a probiotic, like we, like we just discussed, with a digestive enzyme to help with breaking, di breaking down, digesting and absorbing the food properly. This is gonna make sure that you're not feeding the organisms that are producing histamine any more food than is necessary. And you're also providing your body with additional amylase that it may be needing to keep the mast cells stabilized. This is, this is what I was saying towards the beginning of the video. This is the one supplement that I still need. I still have some level of mast cell activation syndrome that I'm still working on. And when you've been as ill as I have, this is something that can take some time. It takes time for your body to detoxify. It takes time for your immune system to rebalance itself, especially when you're looking at um, emotional root causes to these problems as well. And I'm gonna give you a final note on that. So looking at this through a metaphysical lens, looking at the emotional root cause of histamine intolerance, I find over and over and over again, histamine works as a cleaning molecule inside the body. So if you've been exposed to any type of toxic toxicity, so this could be mold and mycotoxins, this could be metals, this could be plastics, you're gonna have mast cells activating and you're gonna have a histamine response in your body. It's part of your detoxification process. So it's, it's important that it's happening. But this also applies, I have found, to emotional toxicity. So if you have unhealed trauma, if you have emotions that have somatized inside your body, it's going to also Histamine is also trying to clear these things out of your body and to truly find healing. So as I said, I'm symptom free, but I'm still not 100% healed because I still have some of this emotional root cause work to do. So I'm working on healing this trauma, which is the final step in this, in this healing process for me. So this is how I would go about it chronologically. Doing the emotional stuff is where you're gonna get the, the end result of healing, but it can be really hard if you're on a really restrictive diet or your gut flora is imbalanced, your mast cells are activating. So start on that physical stuff and then start pivoting over to that emotional stuff when you've got everything kind of under control. So 
I hope this has been helpful. I hope this has given you a step a step by step understanding of how histamine intolerance occurs and what you can actually do to manage it, mitigate it, and actually start to heal it as well. So this is totally healable. I've seen it over and over again. So don't lose hope. You'll be able to enjoy the foods you love again. It's just a matter of working with your body and understanding the the science of, of how your gut works and how histamine intolerance happens and using the same science to fix it. So uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Leave me a, a comment below and I'll see you in the next video. So now I'm just going to see if we have any questions for, for today. So if you're, if you're watching now, let me know if you have any questions. So Jana says, saving this. Love to hear it, Jana. Nice to see that you are... Nice to see you, you were here. Miranda Pruti says, is Megaspore a good one? So this is a good question. So Megaspore is a, is a spore-based organism. So this is, this is going to help with the job of moving pathogenic or histamine-producing organisms out of your digestive system. However, it's not going to replace the organisms that you need that should be present that keep your gut safe in the first place and are what orchestrate and control the healing of the gut lining and keep these other histamine producing organisms in balance. So it can be helpful. It's, it, in my opinion, it's not the best option. Plus they can be, they can cause more of a, a problem. They can cause histamine tolerance type flare ups m more because they're quite a harshly aggressive killing, killing type of probiotic. So if that's what you need, then great. But I would, I way prefer a softer, gentler approach because then you're going to have less symptoms. I think healing is supposed to be soft and gentle. I think it's supposed to be a, a soft process. Healing is, is supposed to be gentle. And when you're forcing your body, you're not really helping it. You're just giving yourself unnecessary suffering, which I don't, I don't think anybody is, anybody that's had histamine intolerance doesn't need any more unnecessary suffering. So I would way prefer to go with a, a lactobacillus and bifidobacterium blend of histamine neutral or histamine degrading species. So this would be my favorite would be the D-lactate free formula by Custom Probiotics. And then some other options would be um, histamine X and smidge. They're also okay. They're not as good. They're lower potency and they're, they're cheaper to buy initially, but in the long run, they're actually more expensive. So you get to, you get to pick. If you have if you're really set on fixing this, go with the D-lactate free by Custom Probiotics. They're definitely the best. So let's see. Uh, Brett says, Brett's, Brett's tagging Connie. Thanks. Connie will love this video. Um, he also tagged Katie McEwen. Thanks so much, Brett, for, for tagging so many people and sharing it. I really appreciate that. Gut lining, leaky gut. Yeah, we're all talking all about that. So Lisa, Lisa Hutton says, she tags Natasha. Thought you might like to hear some of this video. Fantastic. Again, thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate that. It's, it's really nice when you share my video and get it in the hands of the people that really need it. So uh, thank you. Thank you for doing that, Lisa. Nancy. Oh, hi, Nancy. Nice to have you. So Nancy says, I've heard some practitioners advocate for triple probiotic therapy with spore-based, espalade, and bifido slash lacto. So this can be really cool, but I do find it, it in most cases it's unnecessary. I find that the the reason that this works is because you've now got the CFU count really high because you're using three different types of probiotics. Whereas if you just go with a lacto, lacto bifido blend and you do it at a high enough dose, the need for those becomes kind of unnecessary. The reason I say this is if you look at the way that we would eat fermented foods traditionally, all of the fermented foods generally are really high in the lacto, either the lactobacillus or the bifidobacterium. So you get more of the bifidobacterium species in like fermented dairies and yogurts, kefirs, stuff like that. And you get more of the lactobacillus blend in the fermented vegetables, the sauerkraut, the, the kimchi. The one exception would be like natto. You do get quite a lot of, um, of bacillus in that, which is a spore-based organism. I definitely don't think that spore-based and baladi are bad. I just don't think they're the best. And when you understand like the, the probiotic that I'm talking about, the, so Jeff just asked, which probiotic is your favorite? So I would say it's the D-lactate-free by custom probiotics. When you understand that one bottle of this is like $120, you're probably gonna be like, yeah, okay, that's quite a lot. I think I'll just, just stick with one probiotic for now. And th that's the thing. When you really get a high strength probiotic that actually is powerful enough and high enough dose to really do some work, you'll probably find the need for the spore-based and the Baladi. Yes, I'll, I'll write the probiotic as a, I'll write it as a comment after the, the video. So, I'll, I'll make sure I, I, I say it out really slowly. So it's D-lactate-free 
and the brand is Custom Probiotics. So if you go on Google, type Custom Probiotics, there's a website, it's a United States based company. If you're in Canada, they have a separate website. You go on there, you can browse through their different products. If you have histamine intolerance, I would go with the D-lactate free. If you don't, and you just want a really good probiotic, I actually find that this probiotic is usually well tolerated by people that have histamine intolerance. They usually go through one bottle of the D-lactate free, then we move on to their higher strength, higher potency 11 strain formula. By the way, I'm not affiliated with this company at all. I, I was, they dropped their affiliate program. I still recommend their products because they are the best. So I don't even make any money. I would love to be making a bit of money recommending these probiotics to you, but I, I don't. And, and, even if I do, and, it, and even though I don't, I still recommend them because they are just the best. So yeah, I'll write that as a comment as well. So that's all the questions for today. So if you have any questions after, after watching this, you're watching this as a recording, uh, please just let me know. I answer all of that additional questions that we get after the, the live has finished. I hope this has been really interesting. I hope this has been really insightful. And I hope it's given you some hope in, in understanding that this is actually a solvable problem. This isn't something you have to have for the rest of your life. And you just kind of need to follow the science and, and understand how your digestive system works, figure out where it's stuck and support it to, to do so. So Nancy says, you're such a gift. Thanks, William. You're most welcome. Thank you for that, Nancy. And Judith gives me a, a, a heart eyes emoji. So thank you. Thanks very much. Um, I'll leave, the, I'll leave a, a comment with the, the name written out for you, Judith. And that is everything for today. So I'll see you in the next one. Ciao. Happy healing.